Part two, back in the garage again today, guys. Here's where we left off. I'm gonna go ahead and start with making some cones. All right, guys, so I'm over here, I'm at the drill press. I kind of came up with this idea last night of how I'm gonna make the cones that hold the steering stem centered up. Um, I've got two set, or a set right here, of steel cones. These are actually off my wheel balancer. Um, I thought about, well, I can go and just use these, but they're for my wheel balancer. I don't want, uh, I'm going to leave them for my wheel balancer. So I was trying to come, I looked around town trying to come up with a material that would be good. I was thinking maybe if I could find some, find some uh, plastic stock, uh, something that I could easily machine down, um, again, via my drill press because I don't have a lathe or anything. Think about that. I couldn't find any plastic that was going to be big enough, so I'm kind of on my uh, last resort here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take this chunk of 2x4, I'm going to cut it down the center, I'm going to drill a half inch hole in them because that's what size my all thread is. And I'm going to bolt it to that. We're going to stick it in the drill press. We're going to run the drill press while I'm using my angle grinder with a sanding disc on it. I'm going to sand these down into budget cones. Let's get it going. <music> Okay. Guess I'll try some wood that's not 20 years old. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to turn out, but I can take a guess. I'm going to give it a shot because it's what I got right now. Alright, initial wind up here. Let's see how it does. Not that bad. I can live with that. Cross my heart, hope to die. So I went back over and I made this a little bit, took the washer off so I can make a little bit thinner up top. And what I'm going to do is final sand it. I'm going to use a piece of flat stock and some sandpaper. I'll hold that up against it and make sure that this is all nice and even and straight and uh, centered on the board. Cool. Now to make one more. Well, it worked. They might be like a one-time use thing because uh, if you tighten them down too much, it'll get a, I guess a wear mark or wear ring in it from the metal being clamped onto it. But anyway, but from now on, uh, I think I'm gonna stick with metal working because it is crazy dusty in here. Look at the workbench. On to the next part. Next up, we're going to make our clamps. Pretend this is our upright here. What this piece is going to do, we're going to cut this in half, give us two two-inch strips of metal. One will go on the underside, the other one will go on this side. We'll have four bolt holes and that'll pinch these together. What that'll allow me to do is have an adjustable clamp to slide up and down on the upright, and then my steering stem holder will branch out from there. The same thing is going to be done for the axle holder, or the axle plate holder. 
Going to use this plate, do the same thing, cut two different same size strips, which will again clamp the upright. But these ones I'm going to make longer and then I'll have to cut oval holes in. That way I can locate my axle, slide it back and forth, depending on what kind of bike I'm building and what the wheelbase needs to be. And I can adjust it up and down as well to set my uh, axle height. plan to get this steering stem mounted so it's nice and square. I know that these plates are going to be square as they sandwich the upright. So the next step is I'm going to cut off another, basically a cube off of some of this metal. And I've got this threaded nut, or threaded bushing in this case. I've got it ground down so it fits on the inside. So this little cube is going to house this. I'm going to cut off a length of all thread that will go down through the tubing into this nut and I'm going to drill these holes with my drill press so I know that the holes are nice and square and parallel with each other. When the all thread goes through here, it's going to fit nice and snug and nice and square there. And then once this is mounted, I'll have a nice flat spot to come in with my longer part with my longer piece of the all thread which will come out. I'll drill another hole, tap it to accept the all thread. The all thread will come in here, butt up against this flat surface, make sure it's nice and parallel, and then we'll weld it into place. That's my plan. If it doesn't make sense, just watch what I'm going to do.
got me so close And I don't wanna take a trip in the world But I gon' love ya Yeah, I'm gon' love ya I'll give you the world of what I've got The fans and fans, baby, I have not Just gonna love ya There we have it guys, the frame jig is all done. Super excited with the way it turned out. Everything turned out really square. Um, it's fully adjustable, everything worked out great. Uh, not only did it turn out well, but we got everything done on a super budget. Basically what the totals are is I bought the scrap metal tubing which had a bunch of caster wheels on it for $10. I turned around and sold a bunch of those casters for $50 which allowed me to buy all the nuts, bolts, and hardware for another $20. Uh, so in total, I actually profited $20 total on the entire build, which is super exciting. So, hey, if you guys like this video, make sure you smash that like button for me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you stay up to date with all my future content and uh, to check out what we're going to be building with this frame jig. So we'll catch you guys in the next video.